Cornell Notes is one of the best note-taking methods you can use. The system involves splitting your page up into three different sections. One of these sections is for your notes. Next to it is a section for cues. These tend to be keywords and questions related to the content in your notes. And at the bottom, there's a summary section. And when you use the system, you take notes and then you come back and review them and add to them, then identify the keywords and questions and make note of them in the cues section. And then once you're done with that, you create a summary. On Protolist, you can also take Cornell notes. So there are a few differences to some of the templates that you might be more familiar with. So I'm going to add a new page into my lectures table to take some notes based on the example of taking notes during lectures. And then I can open the page up select type text editor, and then you can take notes just like you would in the notes section of your Cornell template. So here are my notes from lecture two. And now I'm ready to think about cues, the keywords and questions related to the content of this note. And so I'm going to make some separate tables, one each for keyword and questions. So to add a table, you do add page, select type table, call this one keywords, add a second one, questions. I'm going to go back to that lecture note, lecture two, and then I'm going to go through the notes and grab the important details in there. So something like this section here, I'm going to highlight that text and then I'm going to hit capture atom. And what an atom does is save that snippet of text as its own individual object within the workspace. And then what I can do is in the bar above the atom, add a relevant keyword. So the keyword here is going to be neurons. So I can type that out. And as I haven't added this as a keyword into my system, I'm gonna select add neurons as a new page. And then I'm gonna choose the location as the keywords table that I just created, and add the page there. And so I've added that page into my workspace and I've also added it as a tag to this atom. So this information in this atom is connected to this neurons tag. And if I close this box, You'll also see on the left side, we've got a hashtag neurons appearing in the margin. So the keyword I'm adding displays in the page, much like your cues section, even though it's on the other side. And so I can continue to do that going through the notes, adding neurons as the keyword if it's relevant or creating new ones and adding them into that keywords table. And when I get to a piece of information in the text where I want to add a related question, I'm going to type out the question and add it as a page into the questions table that we created earlier. And again, in the atom box, we've got the keyword that we added showing as a tag and also the question that we just created showing as a tag. And in the margin, we've also got a preview of the keyword and the question that we've added to this section of text. And so the reason that I set up the keywords in a separate table is so that as you continue taking notes, you can refer to a list of all of the keywords that you've used in the past. So as I continue taking notes, I would have my notes page open and then I would view the keywords table in split screen. So I do that by doing control click on keywords and then I can slide and adjust the size of the page next to each other in the split screen. And I can have a list of all the keywords appearing here. So as I capture information, I can refer to this list and add a relevant tag if I've got one already or decide if I want to make a new one. And so if I now close this lecture and get just the keywords table open, you'll see that all of those atoms that I captured and added a keyword tag to are displaying in this table against the keyword. So as you work through all your lectures, everything that you capture as an atom and tag to a particular keyword will pull here from across a whole course worth of lectures. And in this way, we've got the record of the information that we've highlighted and added a keyword to in the page, but we also can view it outside of the page. So you haven't got to go through all of your notes to find info on a particular topic. And similarly, any questions that you create and add into your questions table are also accessible outside of that notes page. So here we are on the questions table, just the one that I added. And we've got the question in this column and the corresponding piece of information saved as an atom displaying here. So when it comes to you wanting to perhaps test yourself on these questions, 
You can go into the properties menu and hide the atoms property. Have a go at answering your question and then turn it back on to see if you got it right. Let's talk about the summary. If we scroll to the bottom of the notes page, you can hover at the bottom and the add section menu will appear. If you click this, you can add another text section. And then we can write out a summary of what is contained in this note. And then a tip that I've seen in the note taking community is to move the summary to the top of your notes page so that it is the first thing that you interface with when you open up your notes. So you can move this summary section by hovering over it and clicking this six dot button. And then you can drag it up the page and put it underneath the notes title. So we've got the summary at the top of the page. So this notes page is a page in a table. So if I go up to the table level, we can use an atoms property to display all of the info that we have gone through and highlighted and captured as an atom. So you'll get a list of all the key info that you've highlighted in the page displaying in this atoms property. What we can also do is make use of a vertical view to display the information inside our notes in a different way. So this gives you a vertical layout for your table and within the properties of this, you can actually display a page preview. So as we move the summary to the top of the page, this will be the page preview that displays in this vertical view of your table. So if I turn that on, you can see that we now have lecture two, we can view the atoms, and there is a summary of what is contained inside the lecture two notes. So you can very quickly browse through all of the lecture notes that you have and see what info you distilled and have a summary of what's contained in each file. You could also turn off the atoms property if you just wanted to see a summary of what was in each of your notes. And once you've completed your lecture course, if you've gone through and captured atoms and connected them to the relevant keywords, you can jump into your keywords table and view all of the information by topic from all of your lectures. So it might look a little different to the Cornell Notes method that you're used to, but that's an overview of how you can take Cornell Notes on ProtList.